Uh, it's been a pleasure working with Stacy, and uh, this is actually a, a unique, I'm not going to say very unique because that's wrong, <laughs> but this is a unique library where you can just walk in to the collection, take pictures, scan things without having to pay nine bucks per page or whatever. I've dealt with libraries that have been super gracious, but a hundred uh, euros is the price. And it's a great price if uh, you're uh, looking to publish a critical edition or you want to boost your knowledge of what the composer actually wrote and uh, uh, use that somehow for good and not for evil against your teacher. <laughs> uh, uh, Stacy actually didn't have to twist my arm too much to do this because I regularly play pieces where I'm either the first or second performer. Uh, even as recently as last November, less than a year ago, I performed an almost all new program. One of the pieces was hot off the press where it hadn't been premiered yet in live, but it had been premiered in video form on YouTube. So I listened to it, I contacted the composer within hours of him posting this on YouTube and he gave me a copy of that. Uh, the composer's name is Arsenti Kharitonov. And if you can uh, look on uh, YouTube and uh, look up Sicily Parnas uh, playing Reminiscenza, it's a really beautiful 12 minute piece, all one movement. And uh, well, then we're here and uh, I, I'm really thankful for Stacy and her crew and uh, for some friends and colleagues who really helped me out in this research, uh, namely uh, Fanny Namath, who has recently moved to Hungary from the States, and I actually did not know that she moved to Hungary. I contacted her because I wanted to see if she had known a composer by the name of Jemnitz. And uh, she did, only by passing, but uh, she said that she'd be more than happy to go to Budapest and uh, look at his estate. So she's taking over the historical portion and uh, my forte is the theory. So I took over the theory portion. And I'll talk a little bit about that when we get to Yemnitz. Uh, but let's start with uh, Fiddleberg. Uh, Yezhi Fiddleberg, uh, and his uh, first name is Yezhi, the same as mine, Yuri is the Russian, Ukrainian, and uh, Belarusian version. And we have Jerzy, uh, that's the Polish version. Uh, he was born in 1903 and died in 1951. So lived a pretty short life, kind of like Mozart, but maybe a little bit longer. And uh, his father was uh, the famous Grzegorz Fittelberg, uh, the conductor who uh, collaborated with uh, another Gregor, uh, uh, Gregory Petigorsky. Hmm. And uh, uh, the composer Fittelberg, Jerzy, wrote a concerto for Petigorsky in 1931. Uh, and there's no recording of that. It was published by Universal. And if you're interested in Fiddleberg, I highly recommend you contact the New York Public Library because they have a pretty substantial collection of letters, recordings, and manuscripts. So, how did I come up across Fiddleberg? Stacy sent me a big database of solo works. I knew that uh, piano was not an option for me at this point and uh, that name just stuck out to me. Uh, this piece was written in 1945, so right at the end of the Second World War. Uh, I'm not sure if it was written for Pedigorsky or if it was written just as an exercise, but uh, there's no record of Pedigorsky ever playing this piece. Uh, the person who premiered it was Stefan Aubert, the former principal cellist of the Pittsburgh Symphony. He premiered it on April 6, uh, 1946, which actually happens to be 
one month before Yagling was born. So all of these composers uh, intertwine somehow. And uh, this piece is in four movements. It starts on open strings of the cello, so I get to warm up. That's something that you learn as uh, a student, perhaps in a Schroeder etude. Uh, but this piece starts like this. It's uh, pretty tonal, but not functional. You'll hear a chordal harmony, chordal melodies. If you're in theory, you will know that those are melodies and harmonies stacked in fours. You'll hear those. You'll hear some exotic rhythms for the time, like the tango and the habanera. And uh, I believe that uh, Fiddlebird gets uh, uh, that rhythm from Mio, who was obsessed with that rhythm. If you, if you ever look at Mio, just close your eyes, stick your index finger into the score, you will find that rhythm. And uh, uh, there's some pointillism and the uh, last movement that uh, reminds me of Stravinsky's bassoon writing. Uh, there's uh, also some Hindemith, which is the quartal and the quintal. Quintal is just the uh, opposite of the fourth, it's the five. That's quintal harmony, quintal melodies. So that's more leaning towards Hindemith. Uh, the first movement is slow. It encompasses all the themes that you will need to know for the entire piece. Uh, the second movement is a scherzo in three parts. Actually, the first three movements are all in three parts, ABA, and the final movement is in rondo form uh, with a recapitulation of the first movement at the very end. Uh, third movement is slow, and the last movement is a fast march. If you're a fan of 1940s movie music, you will really love this piece. Uh, there's a, a small quote, and uh, not that I'm a cellist or anything, but I'm also uh, studying for the first time the WC Cello Sonata. Yes, I played cello for over 20 years, and I have resisted that piece until this year. <laughs> but at the very end of the third movement, you will hear... <laughs> So, almost the same notes, just transposed up a half step. And the finale, uh, like I said, it's a pointillistic rondo, uh, very vivacious SAT words. March, and if you enjoy Korngold, I'm sure you will enjoy this. Now, I'm, com I'm uh, comparing this piece to many composers of the time just to set the time frame of when this piece was written, but by no means do I want you to think, oh, there's Hindemith, there's Stravinsky. These are just uh, uh, points of reference for you because this is Fiddleberg, and I want you to take Fiddleberg as Fiddleberg and not just a pastiche of a Hindemith piece or, or a Stravinsky piece. In fact, there's a piece by Miklos Roja from 1977, 32 years after this piece was written, that reminds me of this piece. It's called Toccata Capricciosa. And I'm pretty sure that uh, Roja had never heard this piece before writing that one, but uh, perhaps somewhere in the air was floating Fiddleberg as uh, Roja was composing that uh, uh, a short work in Perigorsky's memory. So I hope that you enjoy the four movements sonata for Unaccompanied Cello by Jerzy Fiddleberg.